when you actually heard the news? Morning, Valen. Um, unfortunately, I was out of the country. I was in Bangkok attending a swimming meeting. And actually, the morning of the meeting, I happened to be wearing black. I hadn't heard about Madiba's passing yet, but I went into the meeting and the executive director of World Swimming mentioned to the president that I'm wearing black because Madiba had passed. And of course, that came as a huge shock to me. At first, I didn't know if it's a sick joke or if it's for real. And then as I looked at the faces in the room, I realized it was true. How are you feeling now after seeing what's happened in South Africa since the news broke and with the funeral in two days' time? I think on the one hand, everybody said that Madiba has passed away, but he certainly has done his bit on this planet, and I think it's good that he's at rest now. I think I'm extremely proud for the fitting way that South Africa has um, dealt with the enormity of his passing and the interest that the world has shown. And I think from everything that I've heard, we've done a really good job and hopefully it pays tribute and does honor to the legacy that this great man has left us. Can you please tell us about the first meeting that you had with Mandela? Well, the very first time I met him, I actually, it, it was at the South African Sports Awards in 95. So I was just one of many people passing through. But then in March of 96, when I broke my first world record out at our Olympic trials, I received a phone call at the pool where they basically said that the president wants to fly me to Cape Town to meet him. And uh, having been based abroad in America, especially during the transition and the voting in 94, you know, Madiba is a huge figure internationally, perhaps more so than what we were as youngsters accustomed to in South Africa. So the moment was big and, and in a sense I didn't know what to expect. I thought it would just be very quick. But much to my surprise when I arrived there I had about 10 to 15 minutes totally alone with him in his office. And uh, I just remember he joked in the beginning about my success and my age is pretty close to one of his grandson's ages and I don't know if he was playing matchmaker. <laughs> but um, it was a light moment and he's very good at making a person feel comfortable in his presence and he just came across as this wise older person that was imparting um, his sense of what sport meant to the country and the responsibility that goes along with being a successful athlete. And tell us what happened after that meeting because you guys came out and there were loads of photographers taking a lot of photographs and then you saw a crowd of people, some tourists that had gathered at the gate. Yeah, we were sort of walking down the steps. Madiba was holding my hand and leading me down and the photographers were taking photos and obviously they're facing us walking backwards and there's a fountain in the courtyard and one or two of them almost fell into the fountain. So that was a light moment. And then from there we went on to the opposite end where there's a gate and tourists were peering through it and Madiba was, obviously they were all there just to see Madiba, it, you know, but he sort of deflected the attention away from himself and informed them of my world record and what I'd just done and then he said to them that he, shake, he's, he shook my hand and he'll never wash his hand again and obviously to that everybody laughed and then I said you know it's obviously the converse is true I'll never wash mine. <laughs> Tell us what your most special Madiba moment is. There are many striking moments it would depend how you define it. Uh, one of the biggest moments in terms of viewing his humility and that, that left a a huge impression on me was shortly after the medalist returned home, we went, the four of us, myself, Josiah, Marianne Creel and Ezekiel Sepeng, went to the uh, Union, well, to the President's home in Pretoria where we dedicated the medals to the nation and obviously to Madiba. And after that, we were taken aside to a private lounge where he discussed, again, our responsibilities and imparted his thoughts around our successes. And uh, one of the caterers brought a plate of eats, set it down on the table, and before anyone could do anything, Madiba himself rose and started serving us, which I don't think any of us knew what to do with that. You know, it was a huge moment. And then another thing I'll never forget is at the Presidential Sports Award, shortly after that, the table where I was seated with the other medalists, the chair next to me was open for a long time. So I figured whoever seated there decided not to attend. And then as uh, we were about to get underway with proceedings, everybody uh, sort of kept quiet. There was these hushed tones and suddenly everyone rose and it was Madiba entering this uh, this area and then he made his way slowly shaking everybody's hands made his way around to the table and sat down next to me of course I was a bit flabbergasted 
kept quiet for a while and then Yvonne Shaka Shaka started singing a song that he obviously liked so he tapped me on the shoulder and said come on Penny let's dance <laughs> to which he raised up and started doing the Madiba Jive and I had no choice I had to get up and dance with him and uh, that was on the one hand a little bit embarrassing but obviously something I'll never forget dancing with Madiba in front of about a thousand people. Oh, wow. And as we wrap it up, Penny, just tell us, if you could just sum up in one or two words what Madiba meant to sport. You say that he and sport were inextric inextricably linked here in South Africa and that they're synonymous. But now as you look back at how much he really meant to sport in South Africa, how would you sum it up? I think if I compare Madiba to any other statesman, he took a genuine personal interest, not just in my own career, but I know when I spoke to Baby Jake, not so long ago we were talking about it, where he showed up at Baby Jake's home and shook his hand. And, uh, you know, Madiba, I recall when very few people in the world was tracking my swimming career post-96 and, and, you know, most people didn't know how, sort of, how far I'd fallen off the, the mark that I'd set in, in 96. Uh, Madiba kept track of it and even phoned me at the pool shortly after one of my better swims to say well done he notices I'm back on form and that was very unique. Uh, no other statesman to my knowledge has taken such a personal interest. Most of them show an interest but I think it's based off of briefings and, and information they part, that's passed on to them as opposed to um, a genuine interest where he sits and watches your events and takes notes. So uh, Madiba saw it as nation building and I think it was right there. I think sport is the one thing where we as a nation come together. It's not um, we're not separated by our views around parties and politics, but we're one nation, and I think that's what Madiba was. He wasn't, I know the ANC says he's the leader of the ANC, but he was the leader of South Africa, and uh, that was very unique to him. All right, lovely stuff. That's Penny Hayne. She's a three times Olympic medalist. Thank you very much for chatting to us about your very special Nelson Mandela moment. Let's take a look at that clip. She mentioned it when the Olympic athletes of 2000 actually dedicated their medals to Nelson Mandela. Let's just take a look at what happened at that time. Your outstanding leadership and dedication to the advancement of all people, both in South Africa and throughout the world, helped us set our goals. We pray for your continued wisdom, your humanity and good health, with love and respect from myself, Joshua, Ezekiel and Marianne. Well, thank you very much, Daniel. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks a good one. Uh, he certainly was sport's greatest.